If you could move anywhere in the world, where would you go? Would it be in pursuit of adventure, of building more wealth, to find the love of your life, or maybe to just experience the world in someone else's shoes? Let me know in the comments. For some, it is too scary of a thought to leave everything you've ever known behind, to not be in close proximity to your friends and family. And even if your country is going through hard times, you still feel like it is the only place you could ever call home. Everyone has to make that decision for themselves. But now more than ever, we are seeing record numbers of immigration in many different parts of the world. People searching for better opportunities, safety, prosperity, and of course, belonging. But is the grass always greener on the other side? Or is it greener where you water it? That's what I'm planning to discover in the coming months. Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the channel and part two of my Moving Abroad series. If you didn't catch part one, it was more or less just the announcement of my plans to move abroad and become a Canadian non-resident. I also touched on some of the societal reasons of why Canada has had a lot more people leaving the country than usual. Like there are definitely um, some challenges that uh, have been happening for a lot of people. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you guys my personal reasons of why this move really makes sense for me and my business. I'll be sharing with you my wants list, like the things that uh, were super important to me when looking for a potential new home base. And I will then be deducing, I think that's a word, deducting, Anyways, I'm going to eliminate certain parts of the world based on this list because it just doesn't fit, you know, my ideal sort of place that I'm looking for right now. And at the end of the video, I will be left with two regions of the world that were my top choices as my new place to live. So to get into my personal reasons of why I decided becoming a Canadian non-resident was really the right choice for me, the primary reason really came down to finances and business opportunities. Because when I went full time, like I was not making a lot of money. So what that meant was that I would have to travel for very long periods of time to just save money on international uh, tickets. So I would be moving from place to place to place, like planning travel, actually traveling, filming uh, content, editing content, and just like this continuous cycle where I was constantly adjusting to new places and never really had any time to just relax and decompress and also just have a core you know, social group of support. And while I could make that happen in Canada, I could get my own place, uh, though it would have to be in a major city because I have to be close to an international airport. I'm not gonna like get a place in the boonies of nowhere and have to drive like five hours to the airport to save some money on rent. It really would only make sense if I was living in a major Canadian city. And then on top of that is the problem that Canada doesn't exactly have a lot of neighbors. <laughs> like we really just have the US uh, to the south and to fly to Europe or to Asia or to South America takes at least five to six hours and usually much longer if you have a transfer through somewhere. And it's gonna be like a thousand dollars for a one-way ticket easy. So for me to come back every month or two to Canada, it would just get extremely expensive. Like sure, if I had a nine to five sort of office job here in Canada that I was really happy with, that I was making a great wage with, that afforded me all of the things that I wanted, like sure, Canada could be a great place to live in that regard, but that's not really me. Like I think if you've watched my channel for quite some time, you guys have probably gotten a sense that I wanna have a much more international sort of lifestyle. I want to be able to travel a lot. And second, probably even more important is I really enjoy being my own boss. Like I like to do things 
on my own schedule. As stressful as it is, I do enjoy being an entrepreneur um, where it is in a way, you know, the sky's the limit of what you could potentially make. And I also just love the flexibility that it gives me with my lifestyle. So I don't see myself ever going back to working for somebody else unless I had no other option or my personality does a 180, which, you know, I'm 33, so I kind of doubt. <laughs> so having said that, let's get into my wants list of what I am looking for in a new potential home base. Point number one, and this one is definitely non-negotiable, and that is that it is safe for solo women travelers. Point number two, the cost of living is at least 50% less than in Canada. Point number three is a fairly stable government slash currency. Now I'm not looking for perfection here, like let's be honest, most governments in the world are not unfortunately the most competent. So I'm not looking for a miracle. I'm just looking for at least fairly stable where they're not like changing policies all the time or there's like a coup happening or you know just a lot of chaos within the government. I don't want to move to a country and then just have things be all over the place where maybe they change their immigration and their currency is just bouncing around all the time because I do plan on opening a bank bank account um, in the country that I moved to, I would like to have that diversification and I don't want the currency to just be spiking like crazy all the time. I think that would be really stressful. Point number four, and this is, you know, ideally, ideally, I would prefer if taxes could be 15% or less. I'm not one of those people that is chasing like zero percent tax you know i i understand that taxes have their place and i really enjoy when they actually are spent well when they actually go to the benefit of the society that is paying them i can't tell you how much it grinds my gears when a government just wastes its taxpayers money or it's corrupted and just sent to some kind of oligarchs uh, while the people are struggling like nothing pisses me off um, in that sense more than that and you would be surprised that if done correctly a good government can run their country on around that range of taxes like singapore is actually my most perfect example of that i'm not saying they do absolutely everything correctly but if i was to choose the best government policy that I have ever witnessed it would definitely be Singapore's and I think their tax rates yeah are in that like 10 to 20 percent generally so you know if they can do it why can't we why can't we take some of their ideas and uh, use it to our own benefit point number five is no extreme climate risks Point number six, and this one I will be giving you guys more information about as this series goes on, but for any Canadians or any other nationality, you really need to check if your country and the country you are planning to move to have a social security agreement. Point number seven is that ideally I would prefer that this country's immigration process isn't extremely complicated and that leads to permanent residency or citizenship. Some of you may have heard of something called golden visas where you basically pay a large sum of money or um, buy real estate in that country which is also usually for a very high amount and you are basically just handed um, you know a permanent residency or a citizenship for making that kind of investment. Understandably I'm not in that tax bracket just yet so in my case what i have to do is usually just apply for a long-term visa which is what i am doing at this point in time and then over a period of five to ten years depending on the country you may qualify for permanent residency or citizenship point number eight on my list is that i would prefer that english is widely spoken now don't come at me of course 
I'm going to learn the local language or at least like try my best of whatever country I move to. I think that is the responsible and respectful thing to do. And also will just give you a much more, you know, integrated sort of experience of living in that country. I think it would be extremely difficult to move to a country where if you didn't speak the local language and, you know, they don't speak your language back, like how, how are you going to manage that? You know, how is that going to work? Point number nine is I want the ability to open a bank account in my new country. Point number 10 is that I would like to live in a hub city that has a very good airport with a lot of selection of international flights. Point number 11 is that my country of choice has good health care for a reasonable price. Point number 12 is that I would prefer to live in a city that is very walkable and that has very good public transport. You guys know I'm a walker, like I like to walk everywhere. I like to be close to all of my basic needs. I don't like to drive. I don't want the hassle and expense of having a car. I would prefer to be able to take good good, I mean good, public transport in the place that I live or if things like Uber or whatever are, you know, pretty inexpensive, I would just use that, you know, to get to the airport or do whatever else um, instead of living in a place where you have to rely on having your own transport. Like that is not for me. Point number 13 is nature the beauty of nature. I want to live in a place that within the city has lovely parks, I don't know, has a beach or, you know, has whatever kind of nature that just makes you feel like you are getting outside of the city and can just decompress and, you know, have a place for socializing. Point number 14, and this one is also a given, uh, it has to have fast and reliable internet. And last, but certainly not least, I would prefer that the country that I move to has at least somewhat of an international community and that the locals are actually welcoming of foreigners. I don't want to live in a place where I am not welcome and where, you know, the locals really have an animosity towards foreigners coming there. Like, I don't want to go there and, you know, impose on their country and feel unwanted. <laughs> but on top of that, it's also really important to me that I don't feel like too much of an outsider. I don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. So ideally, I would like it if there was at least somewhat of a, you know, immigrant community from wherever else in the world. And that is my list, guys. That is what I am looking for in a potential new home base. I almost feel like I'm on a dating show or something where like, this is what I'm looking for. Like who potentially, you know, fits this criteria and do they want me back? I guess we will find out in a couple of months. But until that point, I now wanted to take you guys through which areas of the world did not work, did not meet the criteria. I'm not at all saying that these aren't good places to live. Like, please just, you know, understand that, that I'm only talking about my personal experience and what works for my circumstances that obviously are not most people. So if you live in one of these countries or if you've moved there and you had a great experience, like please do share in the comments so other people can learn from your experience. So with no further ado, the first area of the world that obviously does not make sense in my particular case to move to is other expensive Western countries. I personally would not see the point of me moving to the US or Australia or New Zealand or even the UK, which sure is in Europe and is a lot more centrally located because all of those countries are fairly expensive, you know, cost of living for everything. They have high taxes. They're kind of in the middle of 
the ocean, not close to anything else. And in the same category, you could also add other expensive, mainly European countries like the Nordic countries or France or Italy or something. All of those places are wonderful, beautiful places, but they are expensive. They're very difficult to get into immigration wise. I guess that's almost the worst thing is they can be very difficult to get into immigration wise. So that's just an expense that I don't need. So I wouldn't even really look at those countries for my case. Now, the second area of the world that does not work for me personally, I know some people absolutely love this region of the world. They have had great experiences here and technically it does fit quite a bit of my criteria, but there's just a few key elements that have basically turned me off from even considering it. And that is Latin America. Now I do wanna preface by saying that I have not been everywhere, like not even close. There are plenty of countries that I have yet to see in Central and South America. And I know it can really range from country to country, but it cannot be denied that their crime statistics, especially the countries that I travel to, um, are quite high. And as a solo female traveler, like I cannot deny and say that I felt safe. I definitely didn't. Like you guys, if you've been watching me for quite some time, you'll know that I almost got shot at and mugged in Colombia. It was 100% one of the most traumatizing experiences that I've had while traveling. And even if that didn't happen, because of course it can happen anywhere. I'm not saying that, oh, it's just in Latin America that things like that happen. Of course it can happen anywhere in the world. But I'm just saying as a place to live, I don't want to be on guard and, you know, not having my phone out, not having my camera out, it's literally my job, you know, not being able to wear jewelry and to just have to be so hyper vigilant all the time. And also I just got the impression that as a woman by herself, like people just looked at you kind of weird. Like, why are you by yourself? Why are you not with friends or like family or a boyfriend or something? Like that's just the kind of impression that I got that, as a solo woman, you really stood out and not in a good way. The third area of the world that didn't seem like the right fit is the continent of Africa because I have barely traveled it, you know? I only have been to Morocco and Egypt and that was before I had a YouTube channel. So I really don't have much experience with traveling the region. I really can't speak on it. So I'm not about to, you know, do a whole continent wide tour looking for a place to live at this point in time. So in the future, I would love to visit as a tourist, but as a place to live, right now doesn't really make a lot of sense. The fourth area of the world that I did actually consider to a little extent, but you know, for many reasons, wasn't the right fit either is Central and East Asia. Some of you did comment in the last video that you thought Japan was going to be my choice for moving to. And that is, you know, a good guess because that is literally one of my absolute favorite countries in the world that I have spent so much time in that I have technically lived in, like both with my modeling contracts and also on a working holiday visa. But unfortunately, it does not fit quite a bit of my criteria in the sense that it's very difficult to immigrate there. Like it's very, very difficult to immigrate there. Second of all, it is still expensive enough if you are living in Tokyo, which I would want to. It does have the risk of natural disasters being an earthquake, you know, hotbed, unfortunately. And lastly, I think it is a bit too homogenous of a culture where even my friends, you know, who are foreigners that have lived in Japan 20, 30, 40 years have said that they still feel you know, like an outsider because Japan does have a very strong national pride that is just Japanese and it doesn't really, 
include foreigners. And I'm not judging that. I'm not saying they should change that. I, you know, totally respect how they want to go about running things in their own country. But just as an outsider, you know, I wouldn't integrate that well into the culture. I think I am a little bit too different. And the same thing kind of goes with countries like China or let's say India or even some post-Soviet countries that I could technically move to, like let's say, you know, Kazakhstan or Kyrgyzstan, like, you know, a good chunk of the population speaks Russian, which I would be able to communicate with them with. I still feel like it wouldn't really be the right choice for me and also kind of harder to get to other places of the world that I would be interested in. And the last area of the world that didn't work for my requirements, and once again, like I am generalizing, I am generalizing the world for the sake of getting through this video as quickly as possible. Uh, the fifth area is the Middle East. And primarily I am talking about the UAE because they're really the only ones that have pushed like, you know, digital nomads, please come here, you won't pay much taxes kind of thing. As far as I know, most of the other countries in that region of the world are only letting you immigrate there if you have a job in the local economy or you have family there or heritage there or something. I don't think I would qualify for any of the immigration policies in that region of the world. So as far as living in a place like Dubai, I can't deny that there are some really positive aspects about it, though I personally have never been there. It would be a super international business minded community. But at the same time, it is still a very expensive place to live, which more or less knocks it off my list. And the other issue that I would have with it is really the climate. Like I don't think I would enjoy living in the desert. For my particular case, Dubai does not make sense. I'd like to visit it, but not to live in. So what are we left with? Could anybody have seen this coming? <laughs> my two favorite regions of the world. <laughs> Southeast Asia and Eastern Europe, my two favorite regions to travel to that I have spent so much time in, that I have put out so much content about. I think you guys probably saw this coming. It's why I spent, you know, the last couple of years in Southeast Asia kind of scoping out my options. And uh, obviously I have a lot of experience of traveling throughout Eastern Europe. I'm originally from Ukraine. Sure, every country in the region is a little bit different, but there are similarities between us all. So I would, I think, really fit into, you know, Eastern Europe quite easily. And because I found Southeast Asia to be such a lovely and friendly and safe and just, just fantastic area of the world. These are the two regions that do fit my criteria overall. Of course, some countries more than others. So it really does pain me that uh, in next week's video, I will be putting one of them on the chopping block, one that uh, I did decide just doesn't make sense for the time being over the other, but I do just have to say I love both. I love both so much and I think they have so much to offer. So you will have to tune in next week for that guys, but uh, I hope you did enjoy this video and uh, I hope I gave you a better sense of, yeah, why I'm making this move because my first announcement video was just the announcement. It was just a generalization. In this video, I kind of took you guys through why this move, I hope, will really make sense for me and my business. And it will just be a really exciting new journey to, you know, start my life with. So I hope you guys will stay tuned. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, I am sending you so much love and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.